guys, welcome to Crandall Reviews. Today, taking a look at James Wan's The Conjuring 2. Now, three years ago, The Conjuring really surprised a lot of people for being a really great 70s throwback uh, horror film, spooky, ghost, haunted house, exorcism film. Uh, I absolutely loved The Conjuring, thought it was great, and it introduced us to the characters of Ed and Lorraine Warren, two of the most prominent uh, paranormal investigators of their time. Now we're back for a second installment where the Warrens are going to take on another case and where this could have been a phoned-in movie because the first one was a huge hit. It was R-rated, um, even though it was supposed to be PG-13, but they slapped it with an R because it was too intense. Now they're back, R-rated horror, horror sequel again. Um, and like I said, they could have phoned it in, but they really didn't. This hits all the marks that you want a sequel to hit. It gives us the stuff we liked from the first movie. It ramps it up. It uh, raises the stakes. But most importantly, I think, is that this movie is a fun house. This movie is James Wan just having the time of his life fucking with the audience in such an artful and masterful way that I thought it was even better than The First Conjuring. It's my favorite horror movie of the year so far. And even just one of my favorite movies of the year so far. Uh, I love Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson as the Warrens. They are really grounded. They're relatable. And these people in real life kind of could have been batshit crazy. And you could play them like a joke or, or that kind of thing. But they really bring humanity to them. And I love that we take time to just see where they're at after the events of the first Conjuring Um to see their relationship. And there's a couple of nice tender moments between them that a lot of horror movies don't take the time to give us. And in also taking the time, when it introduces the new family, the Hodgsons, in London um, from the Enfield haunting, we actually spend a lot of time with them at the beginning where there isn't a lot of crazy haunting shit going on. There's some mild stuff, but the movie's not afraid to slowly ramp that stuff up. Um, and in doing so, we get to know a lot of the characters. The one son gets really shortchanged. Uh, not Billy, but the other kid, Johnny. He's only in it for like five minutes. But everybody else feels like a full-fledged character. The mom, Peggy. Um, Janet, the daughter, especially. The, the kid who plays Janet is phenomenal. The moments where she is hiding under the covers, terrified. And we've got that great close-up with her with a flashlight unbelievable performance really tough to fake but the main star here is the work of James Wan the camera movements in this movie are incredibly precise fantastic transitions but a lot of time the camera is just gliding along it flies up and goes through windows to bring us into rooms a lot of unnecessary camera movement but it feels ethereal it feels like there's the camera is part of like the paranormal activity a lot of the time the lighting is superb in the opening scenes uh, at Amityville where Lorraine is trying to channel and we've got that great lighting on her eyes and the camera pushes in and just fantastic shots. Uh, the main demon in this movie is such a creepy, simple character design, but it's really effective. And there's a great scene in Ed's study with a painting that you can just feel James Wan laughing behind the camera, knowing that he's messing with the audience, and it is glorious. That that plays to everything that we want a horror movie to be. It's creepy, it's got some jump scares, it's got great camera work, awesome music, um, and then the culmination as the movie ramps up to the big finale really feels earned, and I really liked it. Now I'm going to get into a little bit more spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen the movie, Come back later. Um, so now into the spoilers. One of the best, most James Wanian things in this movie, of course, was the creeping man. And I loved that moment where they introduced the dog ringing the bell. And you're like, okay, sometime a ghost is going to ring this bell. Um, and when that moment starts happening and Billy goes to the door and the dog is there, I did not think that the dog was going to turn into the creeping man. And when he does, it's so awesome and off the wall and unexpected. And it's one of those moments that I didn't see coming. And then the creeping man comes and you're like, holy shit. And then he's gone. And you're like, oh, 
okay, so nobody's going to see this. But then the creeping man comes back. And uh, I just loved all of that stuff with the creeping man. Uh, I love the use of dramatic irony where we know that Janet is telling the truth and that she is really being haunted. But there's that moment of doubt where the Warrens don't believe it. And we're, as an audience, heartbroken because we want the Warrens to save this family. We want them to believe and they want to believe. But at that moment, they don't. Um, and I love that dramatic irony. And then the reveal of how they figure it out was uh, a little bit of a movie device, but it was a lot of fun. And that race to save uh, the family at the end was great. Um, I like a lot of the supporting work in this movie. Like everybody brought their A game acting wise. And that really helps uh, sell the drama. Now, in terms of it being a true story and the facts, I honestly don't care. Um, I do I don't need it to be accurate. I just want it to be entertaining. And this movie entertained the hell out of me. And it's mostly because of that great acting, great camera work, uh, and James Wan just having fun. That awesome, awesome one-shot take of Patrick Wilson when he's talking to Janet. He is on the left side of the frame, in focus, playing with depth of field. She's completely out of focus as he's trying to talk to the demon and as the, the ghost of Bill comes... And just the awesomeness of seeing that transformation and the characters not seeing it. And it's just out of focus enough that it's still creepy as hell. And it's not goofy and it's not camp. Uh, pure genius. Just such a great moment. And the way that Patrick Wilson sells it, he's great in that too. But like I said, I like that this movie takes quieter moments and allows Ed and Lorraine to, to come in you know, spend a little bit of time with their daughter before Lorraine gets that awesome vision and the uh, whole thing in the study. If you look at their bookshelf, there are uh, no letter bookends that actually spell out the name of the demon, Valak, uh, well before that never-ending story finale where she has to shout the name to get power over the demon. And I love that design of the demon, even though it looks kind of like Marilyn Manson dressed up as a nun, but the teeth and everything are so imposing that it's awesome. Uh, and just, I really loved that this movie is patient. That moment where they sing Elvis wouldn't be in a lot of movies. And some people might say, oh, you don't need it. Yeah, but it's just such a nice moment with that family and with the Warrens before shit really hits the fan. Um, so Conjuring 2 impressed the hell out of me. I thought it was better than the first. I think it's one of the best movies of the year. And man, I think as long as James Wan is coming back or has his hands on it in some way, I'd love to see more adventures of Ed and Lorraine. I love how the movies start with a little bit of one case and then move into the main case. So seeing a little bit of Amityville and then going to London and Enfield with that great London calling uh, montage. Brilliant. Um, so if you've seen it, let me know what you thought in the comments. Maybe you didn't love it as much as I did. I didn't expect it to be... So great, but I'm flipping out for it. I absolutely just loved everything about The Conjuring 2. The Conjuring series now ranks as like one of my all-time favorites. Just a great throwback 70s style horror filmmaking. So good. So like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching.